children of the world, parents of the world, this is for you. I'm Rowena. And I'm April. We are best friends and moms to five young athletes and sisters to Olympic champions. We have a mission to inspire our kids and your kids through the stories of champions. Who am I? I'm a champion. Who am I? I'm a champion. Who am I? I'm a champion. Two, one. Welcome back, champions. We have been waiting to tell this story, a story of grit, persistence, disappointment, and sweet, sweet victories. Today, we get the darling of the Tokyo Olympics, gymnast Michaela Skinner. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Oh my gosh. We are, have been just like so happy and excited to talk to you because um, I really feel like we would all have been friends back in the day when we were all youths at one point, if we could have made that happen. But for those of you guys that don't know, Rowie and I ski raced at the University of Utah and Michaela was a gymnast at the University of Utah. So we all have that in common. And this is a really funny backstory, but Rowie and I as ski racers, I don't know if you had this as um, in gymnastics, but we kind of would like fill our schedule. We'd, we'd have a couple hard classes and then fill our schedule with a bunch of electives, especially during ski yep. season. So we could compete. Yeah. So we would like one. I remember our favorite elective. We did gymnastics and we actually got to do it in the, your guys's gym. And Rowie and I were just like, we're in the wrong sport. We should have been gymnasts. You guys are like over there practicing. And we were like, that seems like we should be there with them. I remember we were doing like forward rolls. <laughs> So this is really fun. That class is that class is pretty cool though. I mean, I've you know going into practice, we get there a little bit early sometimes, and I'm like, this is so fun. Like, can I take this class just to have fun to come and play around? So that's really cool that they had it when you guys were there. I didn't know yeah. it's been going on that long. That's I feel so like fun. I used to I used to get on the verge of injuring myself every class, yeah. <laughs> and then I'd be like, I don't know if my coach wants me to take this. <laughs> so funny so and funny you're going back to the U right and finishing yeah I'm actually yeah. I just started this semester so I've already had a lot of tears doing school <laughs> it's oh, hard wow. taking two years off and then coming back so I'm in communications and journalism to do sports broadcasting and I was like oh it's my senior year most of the classes I've been taking like really aren't like that hard they're just a lot of journalism classes and I'm in this like really hard mass comm law class right now and it's just not, I, it's not for me. I'm like, I don't know why we have to take this class in communications because I'm not going to school to be a lawyer, but here we are. So it's been a little bit stressful, but you know, it's worth the degree. I'm almost there. I only have a year left. Yeah. So, and you know how to get through hard things. Yeah, so. <laughs> it's true. Gosh, it's true. I want to dig into the beginning, like little Michaela, when did it all start? So, uh, my, I have a brother and two, two sisters and they all did gymnastics. My brother, not for very long, but he did it when he was a kid. And pretty much since I came out of the womb, I've been doing gymnastics. My sister, Chelsea and Katie would play with me, spot me, teach me back handsprings. I was just like their little monkey. They just made me do everything. So I actually went into gymnastics at the age of five and I skipped levels one, two, three, and four. So it started at level five and it was kind of crazy. It just kind of all started from there. But um, I mean, usually when you start gymnastics, you're around, you know, four or five, that's the age you start. But I feel like my sisters, you know, since they did gymnastics, I just kind of followed their footsteps and took after them and just kind of had some skills before I even started. So it was crazy. And did you do other sports as a kid or were you just all gymnastics? <laughs> all gymnastics, all in. Kind of wow. sad. <laughs> no, it's not, it's not sad. sad at all. Did you it's have the desire to do other things or you were just loved gymnastics that much? I, as a kid, like, obviously with gymnastics, you love it. Like, I feel like any sport you do, you know, you're going to love it and you're going to hate it. Um, gymnastics is just so hard on the body and you just have to start doing such crazy things at such a young age. So, I like as a child kind of hated it. Like I loved it, but I like hated going to practice. I would cry all the time. My mom would have to like force me to go because I just wanted to like have a life and play with my friends. And it was it was hard at times, but you know, it was like 
you know, if I might go to the Olympics one day, I just kind of got to force myself to go. And this, this was kind of before I even moved to Desert Lights, which is where I started the elite program and started, you know, that Olympic route. The Olympics is going to be Michaela's thing just because I hated going to gym and my mom actually had me quit. Um, we moved. Yeah. I mean, so I was an alternate 2016. Um, I placed fourth at Olympic trials and they didn't take me. They took seventh and eighth to Utah for two years and I was seven and eight and we quit when we moved back to Arizona. So I quit for a year and didn't do gym. And then, um, so they took one, two and three and then seventh and eighth. And so that was just very heartbreaking. My mom had this weird feeling like she was watching Carly Patterson Olympics and was just like, had this weird feeling come to her that was like, she needs to be put back ill and, you know, trained every single day. And in elite gymnastics, you're training, you know, seven hours a day, like 40 hours a week into gymnastics. And all my coaches knew I had the talent and could see it from a little, as I was very little. Um, so they're like, Michaela needs to go to a better gym. It's just, it was just a lot. And that's what I did ever since I was 12 years old. And so after the 2016 Olympics, I decided she, she's going to go to the Olympics. But like my mom's like, yeah, right. You know, like. She just wants to have fun. So in gymnastics, I really like didn't enjoy it. I had to decide if I was going to do continue elite and go for the next Olympics and go pro or go to college because I had just because it's it's hard. Gymnastics just isn't an easy sport. So it wasn't that fun to me when I was younger. And so I prayed a lot about it. And I was like, you know what? Like, I'm going to go to college gymnastics. I'm going to try it. I was so over elite gymnastics. I just felt like I went through trial after trial after trial, and it just, you know, never went the way I wanted it to. So I was like, you know what, like, you need to start fresh, start something else. And so I went to college, and that was like when I regained the love for the sport. It was just so much fun. It actually brought me back to like, this is why I'm doing it. This is why I love it. And I, I think it was just because it wasn't so hard. It was just a way for me to like, be able to still do like some hard skills, but in college, you don't have to, you know, you don't get anything for difficulty. So it's more about being perfect. And so I just loved it. It was so much fun. And you have that sisterhood. And I was like, this is the best thing ever. I'm never going back to elite gymnastics. Like my freshman year, I'm like, never, never doing it again. This was miserable. Um, and you know, like, I'm sure a lot of people have heard the stories with, you know, Marta Caroli and us going to the ranch. It was just, it was like a boot camp. It was hard. Um, I would cry every single time I had to go. Um, you know, there's, um, with the Larry Nassar scandal, you know, a lot of people have said like, they've come out and were like, yeah, like, one of the girls, Maddie Larson, I think her name was, would like hit her head on the shower to try to give herself a concussion so she could say she was hurt and go couldn't go to camp. So it was just very, very brutal. We just hated it. It was not fun. Um, you know, it was sad that they would, you know, tr or treat us like that and make us, you know, we're like the best athletes in the world. We make a ton of money for USA Gymnastics and we have to go to New Waverly, Texas, all the way in the middle of nowhere and train and live in moldy rooms. It was just, it was just crazy that they would treat us like that. You know, you'd think we'd have like top notch facilities and all this stuff, but we didn't. And it was just, why does it have to be this way? You know? So at least things are getting better, especially now that I had decided to go back into elite gymnastics. That was like one of my main reasons I wanted to go back was because I was like, Marta's not there anymore. There's, you know, new coaches and new system. Things are, you know, getting better. Um, obviously it was going to take a couple years for, everything to get to where it needed to be. But, um, it was, it was a lot, a lot to deal with. Well, yeah, okay. Wow. Two things. One, I really want to, I want you to bring us back to when it, cause it sounds like so much of this was driven from like, did you have that internal motivation to go to the Olympics or was that all outside from your parents and just the, their belief in you or like it, cause it seems like everything you're saying, it seems like it was so hard and not very fun yeah. and that yes. your mom wanted you to do gymnastics, <laughs> but I know there had to be some yes. internal motivation, yes. right? Yeah, totally. And I, I didn't really know how the Olympics worked when I was a kid. I didn't know the process. I didn't know what it took. But that was kind of always a goal of mine. Obviously, it didn't really hit till I was 12 and had moved to Desert Lights Gymnastics where they had an elite program and a gym that could take me there. And like my first day there, I came in as a level eight gymnast. I did level eight for two years. And I came in and they have a foam pit and just better equipment to where I could actually try to throw skills and learn harder things. And I did a bunch of privates. And my first week there, I was doing skills that 
you know, most kids don't do till they're, you know, level nine, level 10. And I was just chucking all these skills and they were like, she's so talented. We're putting her into the elite group, which is the process to start the Olympic route. You start with hopes and then there's junior international elite and then senior international elite. And so I had to compete one meet level nine. So that year I competed one meet level nine, went level 10, made JO nationals and made junior international elite in one year which I don't think anybody's ever done. So going to Desert Lights and, you know, figuring out this process and what it actually was, I was like, I want to go to the Olympics. Like, this is cool. Like, I actually have the talent and the skills to do this. So let's let's try it. And I think, you know, at the age of 12, it's, it's kind of hard to wrap your head around it, you know, but um, it's definitely something I wanted to do. And, and I loved it. Yes, it was hard, but I loved it and I wanted to do it. And I was like, if this is what it takes, I'm going to do it to get there. You know, so I feel like if you really find the heart and the passion for it and you put your mind to it, you can do anything. Mm -hmm. So was there a moment where like, do you have a memory of like, this was the moment I decided or was it, did it just kind of grow over that year of you really seeing what you were capable of? I think it more just kind of grew over the year. You know, it's, it's, it's hard. You go, I would go to national team training camps before I was even on the national team because you'd have to send in videos to Marta. Um, if she hadn't seen you at any um, international meets yet or elite meets. And so um, we sent in a couple videos and she was like, you know, she's pretty good. So I'd go to national team training camps and I'd be like, like, this is, <laughs> this is a lot. Like, is this something I really want to do? But, um, you know, at the age of 12, that's just, it's just kind of where it clicked. And I was like, this is what I'm supposed to do. This is where I'm supposed to be. And, you know, if, I'm going to do this. I'm, I'm going to do it right here, right now. So I just worked every step of the way. And each year I progressed and progressed and just kept trying to follow those girls that were so good, like Jordan Weaver, Sean Johnson, Nastia. Like I wanted to be them, like going to camp and seeing them. I'm like, that's what I want to be. I want to go to the Olympics. I want to achieve my goals. And I just kept working hard and it just, you know, eventually made my way to it. So it's kind of crazy. Even after all the trials I had, I still decided to come back into elite gymnastics and try one last time. I want you to tell some stories about those trials. I know a couple that I talked to your sister about, mm -hmm. um, particularly the uh, Rio games where you were chosen as an alternate. You touched on yes. that. But she told me some kind of back to the living situations like, what, you guys are Americans, top gymnasts. But when you went as an alternate, I won't spoil it. You tell us yeah. that story where, where you were living, what it was yeah. like. Yeah. So it was, I mean, there was so much back in 2016. I'm like, do I even remember it all? I was like, I don't want to remember it because it was just, it was just a lot. I feel like, you know, being an alternate, you know, you want to be ready. You want to be prepared to step in for your team when, whenever they need you. But at the same time, it's like, people don't, people don't understand in gymnastics, like what we go through. Like when we were in Rio, we trained twice a day. So we're doing like full routines twice a day. And then on our days off, we only had a half a day practice. So we'd be gone for a whole month and not get a day off. That's, that's how Marta worked. And it was like, don't you think we should take a day off to like rest the body so we can keep going in the rest of the week? Um, so it was, it was hard. And, um, one of the days, um, there was three alternates. So one of the days we didn't even get to train with the alternates or I mean with the Olympic team. So the alternates, we had to stay like three or we had to stay. I'm trying to remember. So we weren't, so we didn't get to stay in the Olympic village. And then we had a practice where the, the Brazilians national team trained. And of course in Brazil, you know, they don't have a lot of money. So we had to go to their gym and it had horrible equipment. The beams had metal, like showing underneath the beam, like ripping out. And then the floor was like rock hard. And then we had a vault into like a foam pit and like stack mats. And it was just, the bars were probably like 20, 30 years old. It was just, it was rough. And why the Olympic team, you know, was staying in the village and they got to train in the training facilities they had built for the Olympics. And then on top of it, we had to stay in Lanier, which is like almost like a campsite where they would have like school kids come and like stay. And the room was like super tiny. It was like the size of like, not even the size of your bedroom. And there's three of us staying in one room and the shower was teeny tiny. And then we had to drive three hours to go to practice. And so I am like, I love taking naps. And in between practices, that's when I would take my naps. And we couldn't even come back 
to where we were staying because by the time we drove back, we'd already have to leave to go to second practice. So it was just like, I was tired, exhausted. I was probably crying every single night, calling my sister, calling my mom. I'm like, I can't do this. Like, I just want to come home. This is so hard. And then one of the days, the girls actually, I think had gotten the day off and us alternates still went to practice and had a day of practice. And I'm like, we're the alternates. Shouldn't we be getting a day off? So it was just, it was crazy. One day we were at practice and there was like this rat thing that was like this big living under the floor. So one day it just comes scurrying out of the floor and goes into the toilet and starts drinking the water. And we're all like, what is this thing? And I guess the guy there said they actually will kill those animals and put them on a stick and cook them. And it was, it was a rat that was like this huge. It was like a possum rat. It was crazy. So it was definitely an experience for sure being over there. And, you know, definitely made me super grateful, you know, being here in the U.S. and, you know, all the nice things that we have. Um, but so it was, it was you, quite the experience. How did you take like that experience and have the drive to go for it again? It, it was hard. I mean, like I said, like going to college, like, I was like, I'm never doing this again. This is so great. But um, I feel like in college, so I was talking about in college, you know, you don't get anything for difficulty. And I've always been known for having really hard skills, doing big tricks. Like that's what I love doing. And in college, I still did some of my elite skills. And it would just be so frustrating to me because I would do those elite skills and I would do them perfectly. And, you know, you try to get the perfect 10. And I feel like in college, they just never wanted to give it to me. And so... I just kept working harder and harder. I was like, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. And so to me, college kind of eventually by my junior year just kind of started to get boring. I was like, I'm just kind of doing the same thing. A lot of college gymnasts just kind of do the same skills and they just try to get the perfect score and get a perfect 10. And so I was kind of like, you know what? Like if I'm still doing these big skills and my body has like held up really well, I've never broken a bone. I've never had a surgery out of my whole 20 years of gymnastics so very crazy. Um, and I was like, you know what, like, I need I need to do this for myself. I've always wanted to go to the Olympics. I was so close last time. And I just remember like, I just kept going back to the moment where I was sitting at the Olympics in Tokyo, and we were sitting there as alternates, and we got to watch the team compete in team finals. And I was just like, I want to be out there. And I'm like, it's not about the medals, but it's about working hard for something and being able to accomplish it. And so I was like, I just want to be out there. I, I should be out there. I, I, I should have made the team. I was right there, you know? And so I had this burning fire and desire in me that was like, you were so close. You, you just got to give it one more shot and just see what happens. Have no regrets. And so I was like, I, I kind of remembered how hard elite gymnastics was but I just kind of didn't at the same time. And so when I, my first week back, I, I, we had just gotten done with my junior year season, came back from nationals and I go home and I'm like, I'm just going to take a week, a week off. Cause I just had a four month season in college. You're competing every single weekend. And so I was like, I'm going to take a week off before I start training. And it was like the third day home. And my coach Lisa calls, she's like, so we need to get ready for classics and championships because, you know, it's going to come really fast and Michaela needs to start working right now. So can she come into the gym? And I was like, I guess I'll start tomorrow. So I go into the gym the next day and Lisa was like, okay, we'll just take it one step at a time. So I kind of just start playing around with some skills that I used to do in elite gymnastics and they were coming back like really fast. And then it was like, okay, so we got to get a floor routine you know, we got to get your bar routine put together. So in college, your bar routines have maybe like four skills. In elite gymnastics, you're doing like 12. And then on floor, you only have three passes in college. In elite, you have four passes and three of the passes have to be dancing. And then you have to run off of one foot and tumble. So normally in college, you get to like stand there, breathe, tumble. No, you're dancing and boom, go. So I was like, what did I get myself into? This is horrible. I like feel like I forgot everything about gymnastics because I feel like it was just so miserable and so devastating that I just feel like I tried pushing all of that stuff, you know, away. I just didn't want to remember it. And so it all started coming back as I'm doing gymnastics. And I'm like, here we go. Like, I'm committed. I'm going to do this. So we'll just see what happens. I was like, the worst thing that happens is 
I, I don't make it, I don't do it, or I just, you know, go back to college. That's the worst thing. Like, I just need to try this, you know? So that was just my thing, taking it one day at a time and just see where it takes me. I love that. That's good advice. But do, do you know any other college gymnasts who have done what you did? Um, so the only one that, I mean, I know there was a couple college gymnasts that came back into elite and tried it, but never made it. They, you know, came back for a month or two and then were like, yeah, no, I don't want to do this. And then yeah. Brenna Dow, um, that tried in 2016, um, no, sorry. I think she was at the Olympic trials in 2012, didn't make it. And then in 2016, she decided to come back from college and train for the Olympics, but she didn't make it. Um, so I don't, she, I don't even, I don't, I can't remember if she made it to Olympic trials. Um, I think she did, but she didn't make the team. So then she just went back to college. So I think I've actually been the first one to ever do this. Yeah. And so I think that's another cool thing is I'm, I was 24. I'm now 25. And so for me, I'm like, I'm like, this is so cool. I get to inspire so many, the next generations to come that, you know, everyone always says you peak in gymnastics from 16 to 18, but I was the oldest in the U S I can't, I can't remember since when, but since a long, long time that's ever competed in the Olympics at the age of 24. So I think that's just really cool hearing so many people being like, you've got me inspired to do gymnastics again, 30 year olds, 40 year olds that just go into the gym and practice and have fun. And I'm like, age is just a number. I'm like, if you, you know, eat the right things, take care of your body. I came back and didn't do as many hours. I trained maybe five hours a day. I did therapy twice a week. I did an athletic trainer twice a week on top of it. And I didn't stay in the gym and just hurt my body and just pound numbers. I came in, did what I needed to do, worked on the details, worked on the little things. And that's what gave me the success that I needed to do. Because so many young gymnasts, you know, you're training seven hours a day and these coaches are just beating up their athletes' bodies. And it's like, they don't need that. You're ruining their bodies to where they can't even, you know, finish out their elite career when they're by the time they're a senior or even go to college. They just retire and, you know, just have a normal life. And it's like there's so much to gymnastics. It's so fun, like, to have that college experience and to keep going in elite gymnastics and to continue that. You know, with guys' gymnastics, they can go – Till they're 30, you know, 30, 40 almost. So um, I just really hope that I can make a difference for everybody, at least in the gymnastics world, that you don't need to break your body. You just need to go out there and have that confidence and that relationship with your coaches, be able to tell them like, hey, this is what my body needs. This is what I need to do. And so I feel like I really built that relationship with my coach and especially coming back into elite where like, we don't need to break your body. And I didn't train as many hours. And even when we went to worlds and stuff, I, I did have to push myself a little bit harder because we had two workouts a day. And so it was harder. But when you're with that group of the six of you, you're all pushing for the same thing. So you kind of forget like that you're even training, you know, six or seven hours a day. So I was able to push through it and handle it just fine without breaking my body. So I've just been able to last and, you know, actually enjoy my gymnastics career. So it was very cool. What's so cool about it is I feel like you're not just inspiring other gymnasts, but people for all sports to learn to think out of the box, to make their own decisions, to know what's right for their body and all those things. But, you know, skiing is very similar to gymnastics where people go and have their career. And then when they're kind of like done, then they go and to college. And uh -huh. most of the time they don't go, you know, from college and then keep competing. There are a couple people that do it and it's becoming a little bit more to the norm. But how cool is that to show people like you don't have to make one decision or another. You actually could do both. And I think that's such a cool thing for our all of our listeners to know that like you don't have to be put into a box. You don't have to say, right. okay, this is the only way that you can get to this path. And you you can have both experiences. And, and I love that you have had that college experience because Rowie and I feel the same way like we when we got we were kind of like whatever about skiing at that point and when we had that college experience it was so amazing but to be able to do what you did is just it's really cool I just think that you really are going to inspire so many people by you know them hearing your story and actually I have somebody that has a question for you we do like to ask some of oh, our um, young champions to ask you questions <laughs> so I'm going to play it for you and if you can't hear it we can always play it okay. again Gymnast, and I want to know what is your favorite event and why. 
That is so cute. Emma is so cute. Hi, Emma. <laughs> um, so my favorite um, event is floor, actually. And I love floor because I love to do big skills. I love to tumble. And I love being able to create a floor team that fits my personality and fits my gymnastic style. And then just, you know, kind of going out there and pretending like I'm somebody else and showing the crowd what I've worked so hard for and just being able to do my favorite event and show them what I got. I feel like I love going out there and to present and do the dance and the tumbling. I think it's really fun. And that's my favorite event. So rad. I've got another little gymnast, um, Austin Amos from Utah. I'll play her question for you. Hi, Michaela. My name is Austin Amos. I'm 12 years old and I live in Utah. I go to Bull Gymnastics and I was just wondering what your biggest fear was or like what your biggest struggle was and how you overcame it. That's a good question. <laughs> Hi, Austin. I honestly would say I think one of my biggest fears was going into the Olympic year, you know, with COVID and everything that happened, the postponement, I was devastated. I only wanted to come back for a year because I wanted to come back and finish my collegiate career. And um, I got a bone spur in the back of my heel that was really huge. And actually through my college career, I had um, some pain in there and they thought it was my Achilles. And so when I came into the elite world, um, I was training and it started getting more aggravated. So I went in and my bones were in the back of my heel just kept getting bigger and bigger. And I think from what they said that it started out when I was really young. And so we debated on doing surgery and I just did not have time for that to like shave off the bone spur. And they're like, it might just affect you anyway, because this is kind of how your bone grew and developed. And it's kind of been there ever since you were little. And so I decided to do a PRP injection, do therapy, shockwave therapy. And I knew it was going to put me behind a little bit. And I was like, you know, this could either make it or break it for me, you know, making the Olympic team just because I had to take some time off. And after, you know, a month or two went by, I finally started tumbling, getting back into gymnastics, I got hit with COVID. And then after getting COVID, I went back into the gym, still wasn't feeling that well, and then got pneumonia. And so it was a really big push for me. I was crying every single day. I wanted to give up. I didn't want to do gymnastics anymore. But because of the love of my family, my coaches, my husband, um, they are the ones that kept me going. And I just had to sit back and remember why I'm doing this, why I love gymnastics, what my goals are. And I just took it one day at a time. And every day I just got better and better. And little do you know, I went to classics and had a horrible meet. And then we had championships and did a little bit better, but placed like eighth. And then I went to Olympic trials and made it in the top five and got put on the Olympic team. So I feel like since I never gave up, went into the gym with a positive attitude, listened to my coaches and did what I needed to do. I just like to say that anything is possible. So just never give up and keep tracing your dreams and give it all you got because I feel like that's what I did and all my dreams came true. Oh, I love it. It, it sounds so simple, doesn't it? <laughs> it sounds simple, but the whole process was rough, very, very rough. But oh, so, it's so beautiful. Hard. I was um I was watching, you know, some of your, your videos on YouTube last night and I just like burst into tears because like I don't think anyone can understand even like the immensity of the sacrifice and the immensity of disappointment after disappointment and just to see what happened in your journey. Like it, it brought me so much joy to see a human push through that and then so much satisfaction. Um, I can't even imagine what you feel, but like this story, this legacy, it's forever now and you'll be telling it forever. And you'll, and actually I think like your story is so like, I've been so excited to talk to you because it was a gymnast like you who sparked my Olympic dream when I was four years old. Like I watched Mary Lou Retton. Mm -hmm. Do you know her by the yes. way? Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, I do. <laughs> yes. yes. She's awesome. <laughs> right? So I remember like everything, watching her on the TV screen in Australia, and that is the moment that sparked my Olympic dream. So you've done that. You don't even know who you've done that for. Like Mary Lou Retton doesn't know me, doesn't know my sister who's an Olympic champion. That yeah. Like all of this ripple effect that occurred. And I just, 
I just think it's the cool, <laughs> the coolest story. <laughs> and I want, Thanks. I want you to talk about that now. Um, like the actual, you're in the Olympics, you made the team. I, for people who didn't, maybe didn't watch the Olympics in 2020, one is that when it was now yeah, yeah. 2021 yep, yep yeah because they they might listen to this podcast 10 years from now like talk us through <laughs> you know what what went down yeah so um I'll kind of start from Olympic trials um I was in fourth the first day and then ended up in fifth the second day um and so I was kind of you know I'm like going back to 2016 I'm like okay Am I going to be alternate again? Like, am I going to make the team? I don't know what's going to happen. And Tom, the Olympic coach, was like, try to be more fair just because, you know, it's 2016 um, Olympic trials. You know, they didn't do it rank order. And um, I totally get it because sometimes you need strengths on different events so you can win medals on different events. And plus you need the strengths to create the team. So I totally get it. But um, I feel like, you know, in 2016, we were just so strong that they could have taken anybody and it would have been amazing, you know, so they could have totally just taken rank order. But um, going back to Olympic trials, I, I was just we were in the back room, the meet just finished, and we're in the back room, and we're waiting there. And when I came back into Lee, I told Tom, I was like, so can I just come and do the individual spot? Because now they did the four man team and then two event specialist spots. So I was like, can I just do like floor and vault? And Tom was like, well, we have Jade Carey that is doing that route. And she's probably going to get that spot because to get one of those spots, you have to compete at a couple international meets and like win a certain amount of those meets. And so she was really close to getting it. And so he was like, you know, we want you for the four man team. So we want you to do all around. And so I was like, okay, like, I don't like bars and beam. Those aren't my strengths, but if that's what he wants me to do, like, I'll do it. Like, you know, let's go all out. So I trained to do all around. And so when I was sitting in that room, I was like, well, they're not going to give me the individual spot because Jade qualified and got it. And so they're probably going to take someone for the other two events, bars and beam. And so I think with just, you know, COVID and everything that had happened, it was like a lot of people, you know, had gotten injured and just weren't ready. And so I feel like they didn't really have anybody else to take in that spot. And so we're in the back room, they come in and um, I was really hoping to make the four man team. And, you know, Tom starts naming them off. He's like Simone Biles, Sunisa Lee. And then he was like, Jordan Childs. And then I was like, okay, like, who's it going to be? And then they're like, Grace McCollum. And I just knew that they were probably going to take it rank order just because he wanted to do that and be more fair. So I knew that there was a possibility. But then I was like, you know, me and Grace were so neck to neck in scores. We were just like, you know, barely a tenth away from each other. So um, I just didn't know what could happen. And so then, you know, at this point, I was almost just in shock because I was like, you know, I'm probably alternate. And so right after he called Grace's name, he's like, Michaela Skinner. And I was like, what? I made the other individual spot. So he's like, Michaela Skinner and then Jade Carey. And I'm just like, are you kidding me? And Lisa, my coach, just got up and was like, ah! you know, like freaking out. And I, I couldn't tell if I was happy or not because I was like, well, I kind of wanted to make the team because that's what I was working so hard for. And now I'm going as an individual. Like, I was just so like what you know and my coach is like you know what you made the team that's what you came here to do and she's like we'll take it she's like she's like you don't have to worry about the team you can just go to the olympics and do this for yourself and so i remember you know like walking out and my parents didn't know what was going on so they walk out to announce it to everybody in the arena and after they heard grace's name they like saw me standing there and they're like well, she's probably an alternate because that's what happened last time because they're like, there's no way she's making the individual spot. And so then they hear my name and they're screaming and my family was just so, it was just the coolest experience. It was like, I finally did it, even though it wasn't what I wanted, which I feel like in my whole gymnastics career, it's never gone the way I wanted it to. And I was like, you know what? Like, this is just teaching me a life lesson and it's going to prepare me for something bigger in life later on. And I don't know what that is, but you know, I'm just going to take it and, you know, go with the flow and let it, let it give me those blessings. And so we go to Olympics and 
Um, of course, um, I'm not really good at bars and beam. I've gotten a lot better, but my main goal was to try to make it into floor and vault finals. And then maybe the all around, um, just because of maybe if somebody fell or whatever, I wanted to be able to be able to be a candidate to go into the all around. So, um, I wanted to hit all four events. That was my main goal. Just try to do the best that I can do. So we go to prelims and we're at prelims and that's like the first qualifications to where you qualify for team all around, individual all around, and then event finals. So we start on floor and not kidding, hit the best floor routine of my life that I have done in the last two years. After having my bone spur injury, I just feel like my floor wasn't as good just because floor hurt it so bad. And so it was just the best floor routine I ever did. And so, you know, the scores are coming up and I got like a really low score, but team USA all got low scores. And I think, you know, they wanted the Russians to win. So very political. And, you know, we had higher difficulty in our floors. We like nailed our floor routine. So we were all kind of devastated. We're all just kind of like, what? And so of course, Simone and Jade make floor because they had the two highest. And then we go to vault. And of course, we're starting on the two events that like I'm trying to make. So we go to vault. And my vaults had been really good all year. And of course, in the meet, I go up and I kind of bombed it. Like, didn't have my best vaults, weren't very good. And so I was like, you know, Simone had already gone. So I was like, if if Jade hits these vaults, she's she's in, she's going. I was like, I really, I really messed up. And so after she vaulted after the first vault, I was like, she's gonna make it. So I'm I'm pretty much done at this point. So she does her second vault. And of course, like I see the scores come up and I'm just crying because I'm just like, I really wanted to make, you know, something. And so I was crying, having a really hard time. And my coach, you know, came over and had to pull me together. And I, I literally told her, I was like, I don't think I can finish the meet. Like, do I really need to do bars and beam? Like, is it even worth it at this point? And so I just kind of had a bad attitude. And it was just, you know, like, that's not what you want to have at the Olympics. Like, I shouldn't, you know, I, I almost felt bad to the team because I was crying and I was upset and I was like, I need to be here to help them. They, they still have more events to do. And I didn't want to, you know, give bad energy to the team. So I sat there, sucked up my tears. And I was like, I'm going to finish this meet. I don't freaking care. Like I made it to the Olympics. I'm going to give it all I got. And I was like, you never know what can happen. So we go to bars and it was really hard to change my mindset around. And I feel like I, I just wasn't even nervous. And, you know, bars and beam are my most nervous, nerve wracking events. And so I, I go up to bars and, and I like hit the best bar team of my life. And I think it was just because I wasn't overthinking. I was upset. I just kind of was like, let's go. We're just going to do this, you know? So hit the pressure. best bar. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what? Yeah. So hit the best bar team of my life. Then I go to beam and I was dead last on beam and at all the other events were done. And so I was like, obviously there wasn't a crowd because none of the, we couldn't have fans and our family couldn't come. So it's just definitely a different Olympics for sure. Um, and I build off of, you know, energy in the crowd. And um, I was going to ask you that if that was harder. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was hard, especially at Olympic trials. We had like 18,000 fans and mm. then you like go to the Olympics and have like, you know, just, you know, the camera people and media. Yeah. It was just like, so weird. it was so weird. And I thought like, we had a practice the day before um, we had prelims and we kind of do like, it's called podium training. So we still wear a long sleeve Leo, the judges come, but they're, you know, they're kind of judging us, but we're just, it's a practice meet. And so when we did that, we all like nailed it. We did so good. And we're like, Oh, this will be easy. Like it actually isn't that bad without people, you know, like a little bit less stress, but no, once the Olympics started and you knew it was the Olympics and you're there, you're like, Oh my gosh. Like you felt just so sick to your stomach. But we go to beam, I'm the last one. And you know, all the other gymnasts are done. So they're all watching me. And so I was like, okay, I really got to do good now. So I go up and I'm like, we're just going to hit this beam routine. I've hit it every day in practice. I'm going to trust my training, trust the process. I'm like, I'm just going to go in my zone. And I just step up to the plate, go up on the board, start my beam out. And I just, from right there, I was just locked in, zoned in, had the beam routine of my life nailed every single skill. And after I finished that beam routine, all the girls from Team USA, so all my teammates were standing there, jumping up and down screaming, because I think they had felt for me too, you know, they knew how bad I wanted it. And 
you know, they were just like, you freaking did it. You're so awesome. Like you did it, Michaela. Like, I think just, you know, they, they've watched my story and, you know, they're my teammates and, you know, I've been a great role model to them and, you know, have helped them in so many ways. And so I think, you know, they were hurting for me just as I was hurting myself. And so it was really cool to see them jumping up and down and screaming for me. And we're just so happy for me and said, you couldn't have asked for a better Olympics. This was, this was amazing, Michaela. So that made me feel, feel really, really good. But of course, you know, the tears kind of started coming. We like went through media and I was, you know, called my sister. And at this time, you know, it's like one in the morning, two in the morning. So I'm like calling them and I'm just crying. Cause I'm like, you know, like I didn't get what I wanted, but I had the best meet of my life. And, you know, everybody saw that, that I went there, did the job, got it done. And yes, everybody was devastated that I didn't make it into floor vault finals. And I, you know, had so many messages and it was really heartbreaking and so, so hard. And was for two nights, judging? was it a judging thing again? Like, no, or was it just so no, many people? It was, people? it was so many people were just like, you know, you no, should have no. made the team. You, you know, yeah. you nailed it. You know, you didn't make the team. You, you handled that so well by saying, you know, like, I'm going to take this individual spot and I'm going to do the best that I can do. And so, um, they just said I took it really well. And, you know, they were all just so proud of me. They're like, you know, with not making the team, the way you handled it, the way you went out there and, you know, we're cheering for your teammates and being a part of the team, even though you couldn't be a part of the team. So just very, very sweet messages. It was, it was really, really nice. And, you know, Simone went and tweeted a huge long thing about me, which was super sweet of her. You know, she just had known how hard I've worked for this. And, you know, with being an alternate in 2016 and not going to be on the team with her and, you know, just watching me grow over the years. So she had said something really sweet and it was very touching. And I just remember going back into my room, you know, I called my husband again and, you know, was giving him, you know, all the drama and, you know, just trying to let out all the tears. And I'm like, I can't do this. Like, this is just so sad. And I just remember laying in bed and like this whole Olympic experience was just something different. Like, um, I feel like, you know, there are so many people that were praying for me and I just feel like I could feel the spirit so strong. I was just like, I know God is watching over me. I have my guardian angel and I just had this overwhelming feeling like the whole time I was kind of there. I just had this overwhelming feeling like, like it, it might not go the way you want it to, but it's all going to work out. And then that night after I competed at prelims, I would just had this feeling like you're not done yet. And I'm just like, but I'm done. Like it's over, you know, like what else is there? Like, am I, am I supposed to go for the next Olympics? Like, I don't know. I, you know, my emotions were just like all over the place. And so I'm like, I prayed really, really hard that night. And that overwhelming feeling came again. It was just like, it's not over. And so of course, like I didn't want to stay a whole nother week. And Tom said that I could go home. And even though I was, I was third on vault. So if Simone or Jade got hurt, I would step in for vault because you can only have two per country. But, you know, we're like, well, that's not going to happen. You know, vault finals is in three days. Like, like that never really happens. Right. So me and my coach, Lisa decided to go home. We didn't want to stay for a whole nother week. And, um, two or it had been one day. So it was the next day I stayed up till like two or three in the morning just cause I couldn't sleep. I was really tired. I couldn't sleep. I, my, I had like such a bad headache and then we had to wake up and the girls had practice. So I was going to go to practice with them and just watch and cheer them on. And so I went to practice and then, um, we came back to the room and me and Lisa, we were talking, we talked to Tom, we got our flight reservations to leave for the day after team finals. So we had, they had one more practice, team finals, and then the next day was vault finals. So here comes around team finals day. And I was leaving the next morning, really early in the morning, had my bags packed, ready to go. And we're watching the meet. Team USA starts on vault. And Simone had warmed up her, her vault and did the one and a half instead of a two and a half. And so me and Jade look at each other and we're like, did she just do a one and a half? Like what just happened? We're like, what? And so we're sitting there and they're like, she'll be fine. She'll be fine. Like it was just a weird thing, you know? So then she goes and competes and does the same thing. And me and Jade, like, couldn't even speak. We're like, we're like, what? And I'm like thinking in my head, I'm like, 
they better not have me stay. Because at this point, I was kind of just like ready to go home. I was over it. I was like, finally, like, you know, got to terms with everything and was like, like, I'm okay. Like, I did the best that I could do. Like, I don't need an Olympic medal to tell me that I made it to the Olympics and I accomplished my goals. Like, I made it to the Olympics. I'm still an Olympian. Like, I did everything I could. So like, I'm, I I was fine with it. I was like, I'm ready to go home. Like, this is totally fine. So we go, me and Jade, like go down to the um, back of the arena, because they have like drinks and stuff. And we're like, we just need to get out of here. So I'm sitting there and my coach Lisa texts me and says, they're canceling our flight, we're not going home. And so I'm like, I'm like, talk to Jade. I'm like, are you serious? I'm gonna have to do vault now. Like, I better not have to do vault. Like, I hadn't trained in two days. And oh, you know, and then of course, like, I of course, I was happy, like on the inside, too. I was like, well, this is cool, because now I get the opportunity. But I'm also like, haven't trained in two days. And I feel like, you know, like when you like, you're like, so like, working so hard for something, and you're mentally focused, and then it's over and your body's just kind of like, you know, like yeah. everything's just gone. Your motivation's like, gone. Yeah, you're just right. like, I'm tired. All my adrenaline's gone. So I just like, didn't know how I was going to do it. And so, um, you know, Simone texted me later that night and was just like, if you're going to go in, I'm glad it's going to be you. You can, you can do this. You got this. And went to bed that night, woke up the next morning, killed it on vault the next two days. And then, I was competing the next day. So I don't know. It was just like the craziest wow. thing. Like it didn't even seemed real. Like I was just like, like, this is really happening. Like Simone's not competing in vault finals. I'm like, like, how is this even possible? Like Simone's like the goat, the best in the world. And I'm filling in for Simone. Like it was just so weird. But the coolest part of it was being out, being able to go out there and try one last time and having that opportunity. And, you know, this was God saying, you know, it's not over. You know, you, you, you still got the opportunity to do this. So, um, I think that was really cool to be able to inspire so many people too, you know, that were watching it, that were just like, you know, she did that. She was able to, you know, go through all those challenges, have the best meet of her life. And then, you know, be super sad and devastated over it and was ready to go home and then came back and then got to vault and changed her mindset and was able to focus and do it. And so it was just, it was incredible. And to see Simone like sitting in the stands cheering, like it was just the coolest thing because, you know, Simone's usually out on the floor, you know, competing in every event. So to see her like take that and be such a great teammate and a friend and to like cheer, cheer me on and be excited about it. And she just like, couldn't be happier. It was almost like she was happier for me winning the medal than if she won it. So it was really cool and definitely a dream come true. And I'm so grateful for the opportunity. So it was a cool experience. Yeah, and you cool. got a silver That's medal. So <laughs> what was that? It was so cool. And, and it was, it was so crazy too, because, you know, me and Jade made vault final. So I was with Jade and I was like, you know, if Jade's going to hit vault, I mean, I was like, I was like, she's probably expected to win. And then the girl from Brazil, Rebecca, would probably get second if she hit her vaults. And I was like, I have a really good chance at getting third. And it was so funny because I was sitting there and I was like, I was like, is this bad of me to say? But I was like, I don't want a bronze medal. It's not as cute as like the silver of the <laughs> of the gold, you know? And I'm just like, but I'll take it. You know, it's still really cool. And then like we competed and, you know, Jade, you know, had that weird fluky thing happen. She tripped in her vault and didn't complete her vault. And, you know, I ended up with the silver and I was like, that's the one I wanted. <laughs> so it was just kind of crazy. I was like, you know, I didn't have to take third. I got second, you know, gold would have been cool too. But um, it was just really cool to know that all my hard work paid off and, you know, sticking with it. And even though I wanted to give up and quit every single day, it was like, you know, people always ask me, well, you know, would you, would you have changed it any differently? Like, would you have done anything different? And no, like, I'm grateful for the trials I went through and for the ups and downs that I had and for going to college and experiencing that, but then coming back to a lead. And even though I wanted to quit every single day, it was like, that was totally worth it. Like any process is going to be hard. That's just life. If it was easy, then everybody would do it, you know? So I think it was just really cool to be able to, you know, take it one day at a time, believe that I could do it and I achieved it. So it was just, I wish I could relive it. It goes by so fast. You know, you train so hard for something and then you're there and then all of a sudden you're home and you're like, I tried my whole life for this moment. It's already over. So yeah. wish I could go back and relive it, but it was very, very cool. 
listening to you and also just from watching you, I you are so mentally strong. How mm-hmm. how did you get that way? Was it were you taught it? Were did you have a mental coach? Did you <laughs> just were you born this way? Did your parents help you with it? Like Yeah, how- yeah. I wish I wish my coach Bob was in this podcast because you know, I've worked with my coaches for a very long time, but you know, he just has seen something different in me than, you know, a lot of other athletes he's had. Um, you know, he would say that I go into the gym and even if I fall and kill myself, I just get back right, get right back up and do it again. Um, I don't let anything stop me. I feel like I'm just a huge competitor. I I want it so bad that, you know, the next me, I'm going to be like, I'm not going to give up. I'm going to keep fighting till I prove you wrong. And, you know, Mm. even in elite gymnastics, everyone was like, you're doing so good in elite gymnastics. And they're like, why go back to elite? Like, you're probably not going to make it. And I was like, I'm going to prove you wrong. Like, watch me. I'm going to do this. You know, like I just, I have that burning fire inside of me. Like I'm competitive. Like even when I'm playing a board game, I can't lose. And so I just feel like I have like that fighting mentality to just go out there and do it and like show the world that I can do it. I don't know. I just, I hate losing. Um, I'm always up for a good challenge, but um, I don't know what it is about me. I just, I just want it. And when I want it bad enough, I just go and do it. So I don't know. I I did have a mental trainer um, when I came back to train for 2020 Olympic games. Um, And I have had a mental trainer before and I hated it. I, you know, I just didn't like what they taught me. I feel like it got in my head and just made me overthink and made me mess up just because I've done gymnastics for so many years. I kind of already know what to do and like to Mm -hmm. go out there and get the job done. Like I know what my body needs and um, what to do. So it was just like, It was weird having a mental trainer, but I found the right one. He was actually from Utah. He graduated from the U. He was a wrestler growing up his whole life. And um, just the things that I did, it was just so different than what I feel like most mental trainers do. And there's just so many things that helped me. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I didn't even know that this would help me, but it did. Um, Mm. So I think think it is good to have a mental trainer. I think everybody's different. I feel like if you find the right one that works for you, I think use it. Um, it, it helped me get through it, especially with, you know, COVID and my injuries. I think that, that helped a ton. I don't think I would have been able to do it all on my own. So, um, that was really nice, but. Do you have any specifics of things that he taught you that really helped you that you feel like could help these guys that are listening? Yeah. So one thing, so we, we started our YouTube channel and, um, obviously we started it because we wanted to inspire and, you know, document my journey to the Olympic games. Um, and I think, um, a lot, well, a lot of people came and asked me and they're like, they're like, can you help us with like mental training? And for me, I've never had mental, mental blocks. I've just Mm -hmm. been very gutsy. I'll chuck things, I'll do things. So I've just never really had that problem. So that's been a really big struggle for me to help people in that area. But, um, one of the things that I really did love was, um, on a piece of paper, you write down in the middle of the circle, you write down your goal, your main goal. And then you draw like, you draw like overlapping circles. So they're overlapping. And then in the middle one, you write down your goals. And then on one side, you write the things you can control and the things you can't control. And we kind of talked about this at Utah too, because we had a trainer that worked with us. And there are so many things that get into your head. Like, you know, you go to a meet and you're competing on equipment and every single piece of equipment is different, even though it's like still a bar, it's still a beam, it just feels different, or this, you know, the texture is different. And so there's just so many things that get into your head that you just don't need to think about. You don't need to think about the judges, you don't need to think about the equipment, you don't need to worry about your teammate, you need to worry about yourself. And so anyway, I just wrote down different things, because going through COVID in my my bone spur at the time, it was just really hard to be motivated. And so I kind of needed, you know, that reminder the things that I can control right now, the things that I can't. And so I feel like that definitely really helped me. And then even just writing my goals down in a journal and just, you know, even my routines, writing down the things that I needed to fix, needed to work on every single day and how can I be better? And I think, you know, writing it down and then visually thinking about it. I did a lot of visualization um, a ton, which I used to hate because I feel like I would 
picture myself falling or mm-hmm. not being able to let go off the bar on a giant. Like it was just so like, I couldn't just not like kept doing giants. It's like having a bad dream, you know, <laughs> I just couldn't do it, but you have to train your mind to do it. And so after training my mind to do it and working really hard, it was just like, I would picture myself, you know, at classics, at championships, at Olympics, kind of just like what it would look like, what I would be doing. So I feel like that helped a lot too. So I think it's, it's definitely good to have for sure. So it helped me a ton. I love it. So glad you mentioned all those things. This is, uh, this is what we share. This is what we hear over and over again from the champions sharing their stories. Um, do you feel like, obviously, um, you were born a certain way. Like you've talked about you're competitive. You love to prove people wrong. Mm-hmm. You, um, do you, do you feel like, well, maybe, I, I mean, is that something that like growing up with all these brothers and sisters, like, were you born like that? Did you grow like that? Did your parents like encourage <laughs> this kind you know, I'm, yeah, yeah, this, you know, I don't know. I just, born or raised, I just, right? That's the question. Yeah. I just, I just feel like I'm, <laughs> Like what people tell me, I'm just almost like a freak in nature. I don't know. It's just like, (laughs) I mean, I feel like it just really depends on the sport. Like with gymnastics, you can't, you can't be scared. And yes, I still get scared. And when I compete, I still get nervous. That's just part of being human. Um, But it's like, you just have to be gutsy. You have to go for it because that's just what gymnastics is. You have to throw these skills. And it's like, if you can just build that confidence in yourself then like nothing can be taken away from you. You have to have confidence to be able to succeed. I feel like, you know, you watch, you know, some of these girls compete sometimes and they're just so scared and they just, they just can't do it. And it's like, you need to build that confidence. I feel like having that confidence in myself, I can go out there and dominate every single time. I just trust the process, trust the training. You know, if I can hit my routine in the gym, I can hit it in the meet. You know, it's like, you know, Marta, you know, we could she almost made us so scared that we could just go up and hit a routine any place, anytime, anywhere. It was like, if we were sick, like you had to be throwing your routines unless you had a bone sticking out or puking your guts out. And so even if you were sick, no matter what you went through, even if you were hurting and tired, she just made us do those routines over and over and over again. So we were almost like robots. We could just get up and hit that routine. And obviously like, you know, gymnastics shouldn't be that way. You shouldn't, you know, kill somebody to get to where they need to be. But she also had a had a good work ethic for us to use and a good method that, you know, made us unstoppable, made us so good. And so I think that was one thing coming back into elite gymnastics was like, you know, obviously so many things had happened and, you know, we have safe sport and all these other things. So, you know, USA gymnastics kind of fell for a little bit, but it was like, it was almost just like, you know, kids these days, you know, it's just so easy for them to, you know, talk back to the coaches, don't want to work hard, don't want to do this. And it's like, you got to put the time and the effort in if you want to make it there. It is hard work. And, you know, for me, yes, it came easy. But if you train your mind to do it, you can do it. And so I feel like just taking it one day at a time and building that confidence and just going for it. Go big. Just you're, you're going to be okay. And you might get hurt. That's just life. But you just got to trust yourself that you can do it. So go big and chase your dreams. So I don't know. I just... You know, I just like to chuck it, I guess. <laughs> chuck the skills. I'm like, I don't care. Let's just do this. Like, I want to be good. I, I just want to be good. So I just feel like I would do whatever it takes to get there, you know? I love that internal drive. You know, something I've heard you talk about that I think is so important, especially for um, young listeners, is the sacrifice that you made to achieve your goals when you... Ha, you know, maybe we're feeling like, you know, wanting to hang out with friends, but like, how, how are you, how do you make that decision at such a young age, especially when it's like nothing to you is promised. Right. Um, right. and just like how you mentally like, or, or what went through your head, like to make, to, to be able to say like, okay, I want to go do all these social things, but I'm actually going to stay focused. Um, cause I have a goal and I'm going to do it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I feel like a lot comes with age. I feel like even when I was in high school, it was, it was so hard. I have 12 nieces and nephews. And so I just didn't get to go to all their activities, their birthdays. I didn't get to do church activities. I didn't get to go to, you know, all the high school events, you know, dances and all that fun stuff. It was, it was really, really hard. And I think, you know, 
obviously my mom, you know, had a lot to do with it, pushed me to keep going. And, you know, my mom, I think, you know, some parents can get really involved in their, their kids sports. And it's like my mom, you know, she pushed me and kept me going, but if I wanted to quit or didn't want to do it, I didn't have to do it. She was just there to push me, to help me. Um, you know, she was my, my, she built, she boosted my confidence and my self-esteem in myself. And, you know, I could go and vent to her and she would just give me the right words to help me to keep going. Um, so that was really nice to have that support system. And same with my sister, Chelsea, we're super close and, you know, she always wanted to go to the Olympics. So whenever I was having a bad day, she was just like, you're too freaking good to quit. Like, you're going to keep going. You got this, you can do it. She's like, she's like, I know you're going to make it. So just keep pushing hard. Even when it gets tough, you know, you're, you're going to, you're going to get through it. It's going to be worth it. And so um, just having those little things definitely just helped me, but I don't, it's just, I it's love been, it. it's been That's a lot. So ins- it's really inspirational. I just think it's really, I love it. Before we let you go, when you mentioned earlier in our chat that you just like really didn't get injured. I mean, you had a few things like, I wonder what you were telling yourself, like what you believed about your body. Do you think mm-hmm. that had something <laughs> to do with it or are you actually a freak of nature? Yeah. <laughs> So a couple of things. So I was actually talking to my friend the other day about it because I was like thinking about it. I'm like, how have I gone my whole career with like, Mm -hmm. I mean, I've had like, you know, little things like tendonitis and sprained ankles and whatever, but never having a a surgery and having to be out of gymnastics. And so I was like thinking to myself, I'm like, like, that's so weird. Like, how is my body like that? Like, how does that happen? And so I was really thinking about it. And especially coming back into gymnastics, like being older, it does get scarier than like when I was a kid, like, I wasn't as scared as I am now. And so Mm -hmm. I think like, I just had always like, you know, seen people get hurt, and I just hated it. And I was like, telling myself, I'm like, if that ever happened to me, I literally think I would die. Like I would just pass out and die because I wouldn't be able to handle a bone sticking out or hurting in pain. Like I just don't think I'll be able to handle it very well. So I just feel like I always just told myself like you're not going to get hurt because you don't want to be hurt because <laughs> I just don't want to go through the pain and the struggle and the rehab and all that stuff. So I don't know if that maybe could be why and I just whatever. But I also just have a very sturdy body. Um, I'm not really flexible and a lot of people think that's crazy because in gymnastics like – you need to be flexible. And a lot of gymnasts are flexible. But I have tried so hard to be flexible. And I just, I think it's just genetics, like none of my siblings are very flexible. And so, um, you know, in gymnastics, it was hard, I got a lot of hateful and hurtful comments, because you know, in in gymnastics, you have to have the difficulty, but you also have to have the execution and the form, you got to look pretty. And even though I was straightening my legs, they just look bent. And so that was something I really had to break the habit of and had to try to fix, which it got better over the years and going to college and going back to the basics definitely helped me get better. Um, But a lot of people just can't wrap their head around it. They're like, you just need to get more flexible. You can do it. And I'm like, my body just does it. And you know, the older you get, it's harder to get more flexible. Mm -hmm. So, um, that was just something I really had to work on. But I think being so tight and sturdy has helped my body be able to take hard landings. Like I've literally probably killed myself so many times. And for some reason, I just like never get hurt. It's the weirdest thing. And I think it's because my joints are so stiff. Like my wrists don't bend. My ankles don't bend. I can't even like put my shoulders behind my back. They just nothing moves. Like every part of my body's stiff. And I feel like when the girls are more flexible, you tend to see them have more problems. Their ankles roll, you know, their backs have a lot of back problems because their back's too flexible. So just so many different things. So I think, you know, being more sturdy, like same with Simone, she's more flexible than I am, but she has a really strong, sturdy body. And I just think that really helps with gymnastics. Well, what I just heard is that you've been giving yourself an amazing affirmation for your whole (laughs) life. And we all know how how important and powerful words are. And you guys, that just goes to show, like, you didn't even know you were doing it, but you were doing it, you know, like, I am not. I have a strong, sturdy body. Yeah, I just, I think I do not get injured. And I feel like, you know, sometimes people will say things to themselves in their head, like a lot of it's mental, like they'll sit there and be like, you know, like, I feel like this is going to happen. And then they go and they do it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's just like, telling yourself you're not going to do it, you're going to be fine. That's what worked for me. So 
I hope it works for you. Hopefully that works. (laughs) And the other part of that story is fascinating to me too, because um, how many people could have written you off? Like a gymnast that's not flexible? I've never heard of that. (laughs) The whole thing is just inspiring. I know. What a fun chat. So crazy. Before we let you go, we'd love to hear from you. um, What does champion mean to you? What does being a champion mean to you? Uh, I mean, kind of like I've, I've said before through this podcast, you know, you don't need to be a champion just because you won a medal. You need to be a champion because you worked hard to get there and you went through all the struggles, you went through all the challenges, you went through the heartbreaks and then you overcame that and you were able to be successful and maybe you did get a medal. Maybe it wasn't first place, maybe it wasn't gold, maybe it was silver, maybe it was bronze, maybe it was eighth, but who cares? You were able to be on the podium, you did something that made you happy and you achieved it. So I just feel like for me to never give up and just keep chasing your dreams, you'll become a champion. Yes, I love it. Can you tell our listeners where they can find you? Yeah, so I am on Instagram, Michaela Skinner 2016. Maybe we'll change one day, but it's quite the process. So maybe one day it will be 2020. But um, Michaela Skinner 2016 on Instagram, Facebook, Michaela Skinner, Twitter, Michaela Skinner, and same with YouTube, Michaela Skinner. Um, hopefully, we get more videos up on YouTube. We've kind of been on a break for a while, but um, hopefully, we'll be posting more soon. But that's my social media handles. Uh, we are excited to watch the rest of your journey. This is like the beginning now and what you use, everything you've learned towards. I'm excited. I know. I'm Thank excited you. for the future. We'll see what happens yeah. with my life. It's so weird being retired, but it's been so nice. So rewarding. Um, you know, doing gymnastics for 20 years was a long time. So I'm ready to live my life and be a normal person and excited for the future. Oh, we're Love excited it. for Thank you. you. Thanks again for being here. Of course. Thanks for having me. 